Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a brand new gaming PC for $500. So the last time I did this build was back in July of last year, and while that was an awesome build at the time, there have been a lot of new parts that have come out, and a lot of cool things that we can upgrade to make this even better. To give you guys an idea of the performance, obviously I can't test every single game ever on this, I chose a few games that are very graphically intensive and tried them on the $500 PC to see how they ran. To start with, we have Battlefield 3. With the resolution set to 1920x1080, in the campaign I was able to use ultra settings with the anti-aliasing off, and in multiplayer high settings worked very well. Far Cry 3 also works very well. Here again with the resolution set to 1080p, I found that high settings were the sweet spot here as it was easily able to stay well above 30 frames per second. Next up we have Crisis 3, which is one of the best looking PC games ever. For this one we had to turn the settings down to medium, however do keep in mind that even computers that cost twice as much as this can sometimes struggle to run it on high. To kick the build off, we're going to be using an Intel Core i3-3220. Now I recently did a comparison between the Core i3 and a pair of AMD CPUs, and this was the clear winner, making it a good fit for this budget PC. So this is a quad-core processor clocked at 3.3 GHz, however it does have Intel hyper-threading, which allows Windows to see it as a quad-core CPU, and a lot of games will actually be able to leverage that to run even faster. For about $130, this is a great fit for our build. For a motherboard, we're going to be using an MSI B75MAP45. Now the reason I like this board is it comes with a lot of the features that you need and nothing you don't. So for example, it does have a SATA 3 port, which means that if you ever want to upgrade to an SSD, it's very simple, and it also has cool things such as USB 3.0 support. Another very nice thing about this motherboard is that if you ever would like to upgrade, you can ditch your Core i3 and grab a Core i5 or Core i7 and it will work without a problem, all for about $65. For a graphics card, we're going to be using an EVGA GeForce GTX 650 Ti. Now this is a fantastic mid-range card, which of course, like I was saying earlier, will be able to play games such as Crisis 3 and Battlefield 3, and basically anything else you throw at it. Now it does support 1GB of GDDR5 memory, there is a 2GB version of this card, however I find that to be just a little overpriced, so I decided to stick with the 1GB version for this one. It is also very overclockable so you can get some extra performance out of it, and with support for up to 3 monitors, it's a very solid card for about $150. For memory, we're going to be using 4GB of Corsair Vengeance RAM. Now this is solid stuff that I use in my own build, and as it's clocked at 1600MHz, that's about the sweet spot for an Ivy Bridge based system like this. Now I will be the first to admit that 4GB isn't a ton of RAM, so I do recommend that when you can, you can upgrade this, and because this motherboard has 4 DIMM slots, if you'd like, you can bring this all the way up to 16GB of RAM. However, if you want to just stick with the 4GB version, which is what I did with this build, it's going to run you about $25. For a hard drive, we're going to be using a 500GB Western Digital Caviar Blue. Now this is pretty much the only hard drive I ever use in my budget PC builds, and there's a good reason for that. For starters, since it does have 500GB of capacity, that's going to be a lot of room for all your music, your pictures, your videos, your games, all that kind of stuff. Although I will mention that, and I'll add another link in the description if you guys are interested, there's also a 1TB version of this drive if you want a little bit more storage. On top of that, since it is a 7200 RPM drive, it's going to be relatively fast, and it is very reliable. I've used many of these over the years and never had any problems. So all of this for $60 makes it a solid deal. For a power supply, we're going to be using a 430 watt Corsair CX430. Now this is a great little power supply that is not only reliable, but it's also efficient with an 80 plus bronze certification. Now 430 watts is overkill for the system as it pulls something more like 150 watts when you're actually gaming, however having extra overhead is not a bad thing at all, as this allows you to, if you'd ever like to, add additional hard drives, fans, lights, all that kind of stuff to your computer without any problems, all for about $40. For the case, we're going to be using an NZXT Source 220. Now I've recently been using a lot of NZXT cases in my build, and I've got to say I've been very impressed. So the Source 220 gives you a full ATX sized enclosure, which means that you have plenty of room for expansion, for your hard drives, pretty much anything you can think of to throw in there, it should fit. Now it does have a couple of additional features, including an extra 140mm fan over the previous version, as well as USB 3.0 support on the front panel. So all of this for about $50 makes it a fantastic case. So there you guys go, an awesome $500 gaming PC. Now do keep in mind the prices are always changing, so I will have links to everything I mentioned in the description of this video, and on top of that I'll also add some additional upgrades. So for example if you want to connect to Wi-Fi, you want to add a DVD drive, a bigger hard drive, Windows 8, whatever you want to do, I'll have a ton of links in the description of this video, so be sure to check them out. If you guys are interested in more, feel free to check out some of my other PC builds, including the $350 build that I did last month. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.